Well, it's official. Alejandro Pantoja just became one of my favorite fighters. There is simply no quit in this man, and all of his fights are more exciting than the last. Pantoja ends up defeating Steve Urseg by a unanimous decision, winning 48-47 on two of the judges' scorecards and 49-46 on one of the judges' scorecards. All three judges gave Pantoja round 5, 3, and 1, and two of the judges gave Steve Urzeg rounds 2 and 4. This was a closer fight than I thought it would be, and while I wasn't too surprised by anything that either of these fighters did, Pantoja was taking his foot off the gas for large portions of the fight, allowing Steve Urzeg to take over the center of the octagon and land his good strikes on Pantoja. Pantoja was also landing good strikes on Steve Urzeg, landing hard shots when they were brawling, landing good leg kicks, good body shots, and Urseg was landing jabs, right crosses, elbows to Pantoja's head when he would step in. The difference maker was the grappling. Pantoja was able to land with big shots. Steve Urseg was also able to land with big shots, an elbow that cut Pantoja open in round three. Pantoja had this grappling, and in the majority of the rounds, he was able to get takedowns and have significant amounts of control time. Essentially, Pantoja was able to just outwork Steve Urseg and outdo Steve Urseg in trading shot for shot. Look at this brutal elbow that Urseg lands on Pantoja and he just eats it. Another elbow that sliced Pantoja's forehead open and yet Pantoja just takes it and lands a right hand of his own, stunning Steve Urseg with it. Urseg lands that elbow and he lands the follow up left hook, the exact same hook he landed on Matt Schnell, but Pantoja has just a different kind of chin and he just eats both of those strikes and then takes Steve Urseg down. There is not much more to analyze about this fight. Pantoja has some of the most high level and entertaining grappling that you're ever going to find in MMA. Let's just take a quick look at this scramble that happened in round five. Urseg goes for a takedown, turns the corner on Pantoja. Pantoja grambi rolls, throwing Urseg center of gravity over him, attacks a leg, uses that leg attack to sit up on top of Urseg, and then spins around to enter into a pseudo side control. Urseg is no slouch himself, and he gets full guard. Pantoja passes the full guard into a half guard. Steve Urseg pushes up and hip thrusts Pantoja off of him, yet Pantoja repositions himself and attacks Urseg back again, ending back up into half guard. And then another just amazing scramble. Urseg hip thrusts up, Pantoja goes back on top of him. Urseg then rolls onto a turtle position, giving Pantoja access to his back. Pantoja goes for the back take. Urseg tries to roll out of it and roll into his guard, and Pantoja is just too quick, and he pushes up and ends the scramble in full mount. That was just a beautiful scrambling sequence from both of these guys. And credit to Steve Urseg, I thought that Pantoja would finish him in round four or five, but he was able to hang in there. I think Pantoja took round four off, and Steve Urseg made this a really exciting fight. So at the end of the day, Steve Urseg had some great strikes. He was probably out working Pantoja on the feet, but Pantoja's grappling was the difference maker. Is Steve Urseg going to be back in title contention? I think so. I think that the flyweight division has some really promising prospects right now with Mohamed Mokhaev, Amir al -Bazi, and now Steve Urseg. He was ranked number 10 and put on a war with the champion Alejandro Pantoja. He is going to be a mainstay in the flyweight division and I think they can put him up against anyone in the top five and it would be a great fight. As for Pantoja, he still got it. He took about as much damage as I was expecting him to in this fight. He always gets hit. He said that he gets hit too much and he needs to move his head more in his post-fight interview. He said he was taking a, he's going to take a break. I think this is a great idea for him to take a break from fighting. He did fight three times in a year, so that's super impressive from Pantoja, especially since all three of those fights, Moreno, Roy Vall, and now Steve Urseg, have all been brutal back-and-forth wars that Pantoja has had to gut out. However, he is 34 years old, and time is not on his side. 
He really should try to get one or two more title defenses under his belt in the next year, in my opinion. So he doesn't have the luxury, especially at these lower weight classes, to take a ton of time off to himself. Pantoja's grappling continues to prove to be some of the best in the world and for sure the best in the division. And while his striking is a little bit bar fighty and sloppy at times, his grappling is just a joy to watch. And his grappling is able to get him out of these bad striking positions where he'll find himself eating a bunch of shots from the more technical more light-footed striker. So do I think that he is going to lose his title anytime soon? I think that he definitely can defend it one or two more times, and he has it in him to keep having these wars as long as he's being safe in the gym. Anyway, it was a pretty fun night of fights. Jose Aldo had a great performance against Jonathan Martinez. Anthony Smith stuck his middle finger up to all of his haters by guillotining Vitor Petrino. Michelle Pereira had a great performance, and Caio Baraljo dispatched Paul Craig in round two, and hopefully that should send Paul Craig into retirement because I'm getting a little bit tired of seeing him get knocked out. Let me know what your thoughts were of the fight. How much longer do you think Pantoja can hold on to the belt? And thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the fights and have a great rest of your day.